We're at the 21st CROI. We're here with the chair of the CROI, Kevin DeCock, who has been our longest term uh, advocate of the program because you've been in every single one of them since day one, a hundred million years ago. <laughs> <laughs> and we feel like it today. Uh, the last day of the CROI. So uh, I really appreciate your, your um, expertise and your devotion to the field and your commitment. And now, of course, your uh, this is your last year as the chair of the CROI, so uh, maybe you can look back on that a little bit and reflect on what this year was. There was transition, a little bit of management, and now we are looking at uh, um, maybe a whole new future for the CROI and what it's going to do for the community. And it's much broader in, in context in programs. Uh, it even has behavioral stuff, which is becoming more important. Well, thank you. Uh, good mm -hmm. to be with you again. Um, Yes, it's, uh, this is my second year as chair, my final year as chair, so I'll be stepping down. Um, Dr. Scott Hammer is going to be the new chair. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's been a good cry this year. It's, uh, uh, if I look back to when we first talked, mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. a while ago now, it's quite some the years grim ago. Days. Um, Very grim days. Very grim days. Yes, the <laughs> late 90s. Yeah. Uh, I, th I suppose what's changed in cry over those years, obviously, is the um, scale up of access to therapy throughout the world mm -hmm. and that as a um, as a major scientific topic of interest <coughs> uh, you know just got more and more visible at the conference and so mm -hmm. I find it very pleasing that today the global aspects of the whole mm -hmm. epidemic and the science around the epidemic the science around the uh, response is really a integral and dominant part of the program mm -hmm. Whereas 20 years ago, you, you, know, you talked about an international stuff and nobody was terribly interested. Or, or it was actually questioning whether it was possible. Yes, yeah. The, uh, the scale up and so forth. So, um, you know, I think uh, it's, it's I personally, I find it very pleasing that uh, epidemiology, public health, uh, prevention science has become such an integral part of the program. It's now very, very strong. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of how CROI is organized, you know, we have a chair and two vice chairs. and those three leadership positions are distributed across basic science, clinical science, and epidemiology and, and public health. So mm -hmm. um, I'll be stepping down and uh, somebody else will have to be appointed into a leadership mm -hmm. position for mm -hmm. epidemiology and public health and that will happen. Uh, as I said, Dr. Hammer will be the new chair. Dr. Julie Overbach remains as co-chair and mm -hmm. ultimately will become chair in due course. Mm -hmm. um, I think another way that the conference is broader this year, um, we, we did mention this last year, but it's becoming more visible, is the integration of hepatitis work. Mm -hmm. um, uh, that largely driven actually by the treatment um, advances in hepatitis C, mm -hmm. and also tuber an emphasis on tuberculosis. Mm -hmm. uh, so as you say, CROI has become broader. But you know, I hope it's been a good conference mm -hmm. for everybody. I think, I think it's been outstanding. It's mm -hmm. been well run. So. I think we should be pleased. It's almost like uh, we started out with a name <coughs> that, that now does not really befit it. It, it certainly did then because the opportunistic infections were a large part. We had no treatments that we had the opportunistic right. infections to deal with and all those side effects. But now it's more like comorbidities. And, and, uh, but you know, it, its name will, will endure, I'm sure. That's, yeah. uh, of course, that's quite true. The, uh, Th there's much less emphasis on opportunistic infections than there used to be because actually, uh, you know, the most effective form of OI prophylaxis is actually antiretroviral therapy. So mm -hmm. as more people get treated and treated earlier, we see far fewer, uh, mm -hmm. thank goodness, far fewer opportunistic infections. And they individually are not that worthy of attention or interest scientifically. Mm -hmm. uh, it was only in the context of immunosuppression that they... Mm -hmm played the role they do. So we, we see much less on pneumocystis, for example, but tuberculosis, of course, is different. It's a public health priority in its own right. Mm -hmm. uh, hepatitis is different because that really is a comorbidity more mm -hmm. than, uh, than anything else. And of course, the whole issue of toxicity and side effects uh, becomes ever more important. So you're right, the, the flavor has changed. Mm -hmm. It'll be interesting to see what happens to the name. Uh, yeah. I mean, lots of organizations face this, actually, as their, yes, their, their the mandates change. Yeah, and, uh, exactly. But for the time being, I think the, the name is good, and we should stick with it. It's a good brand. 
when you, uh, you of course, saw the Bertozzi presentation this morning, quite profound, and I, the, is, the way he felt about how the epidemic should be managed and the, the funding should be managed, I think, uh, it was quite insightful. Did, how did you feel about that? Yes, uh, it was insightful, and uh, we've had good, good feedback on that presentation. It mm -hmm. was, uh, I thought it was very well done. Mm -hmm. um, we, we face reality that funding will not continue to increase. and uh, you have to work smarter. You will have to work smarter and more effectively and efficiently. Mm -hmm. And, of course, there are other competing demands in global health. Mm -hmm. So um, a lot of food for thought. But I, I don't think we should be pessimistic, though. I mean, I think we, mm -hmm. we, we see these issues. We, we just need to deal with them. Um, mm -hmm. And I think what's, what's important also is, you know, the countries that we're talking about, we talk about low, low and middle income countries, but some of the fastest growing economies in the world are in the global south, including mm -hmm. in Africa. Mm -hmm. And Many of these countries are emerging into middle income status or will do in coming years. That would be fabulous. Years. And They'll I mean be countries, more on their own. Than countries than have than to than carry a greater part of their own burden, there's no question. Um, this, this isn't a light switch phenomenon, you know, mm -hmm. but, but it's, we're in this together mm -hmm. and uh, um, it's a very different, really, it's a very different time from when PEPFAR and the yeah. Global Fund started over 10 years ago. Which, which he related to as yes. being one of the most profound things that he like to have on, you know, yeah. have a passport for this country that yeah. seemed to do such good things and yeah. that far. So it, it seems like this is a, um, every time we talk at a conference like this, it's like there's a turning point and there's a lot of hope. And I think we should uh, applaud the hope that we've got for the work that's been done. And, and the conference that covers all of these areas that you mentioned uh, is becoming even more diverse. The, the, the challenges are becoming like in the presentation with My Michael Malam, he's come out with, it's almost like opening another big door with lots of opportunities for research. And of course, we now have to be competing again against those who will also be looking for doing research. Uh, lots of questions there to be answered, but lots of opportunities if we're willing to make the investment. So we can only encourage the national government to make even a greater investment in the NIH and, and the funding that they may put forward from there. So. Certainly, I, I mean, I think we should, you know, recognize the enormous contribution the United States makes mm -hmm. to supporting global biomedical research, um, mm -hmm. particularly through the NIH, but through, you know, philanthropic foundations mm -hmm. uh, like the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Right. Uh, the, the U.S. has made a very substantial contribution, and mm -hmm. you know, we must hope that that continues and is mm -hmm. not uh, jeopardized. When you go back to Kenya and you've been away and then you come back, uh, is that true or, or are you kind of there anyway You're in, in mental? You kind of <laughs> live with your mind there maybe? Because that seems to be your stomping ground. So well, that's, that's where I am based yeah. right now, yeah. 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 But I mean, do you, do you find that the improvements satisfying in the way that things are moving? Yeah, but you know, one mustn't be complacent. Yeah, I, no. think, I, think, yeah. Uh, I think Kenya, like many other African countries has changed profoundly and very mm -hmm. uh, substantially over a relatively short period of time. Mm -hmm. So we're seeing major health transitions. Uh, um, you know, many of the changes we see in Africa are the same changes that happened elsewhere but earlier. So we are seeing mm -hmm. declines in fertility, you know, mm -hmm. less children per woman, um, increased child survival, less child mortality, increased life expectancy, mm -hmm. but slowly. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, you know, it does take time. With all of that, we also see emerging issues. You know, there's economic growth comes with urbanization, mm -hmm. but poor infrastructure. So, you know, you have all the problems of, uh, growing of traffic and yeah, uh, growing you know, economy, lifestyle yeah. diseases and all those issues. So, uh, exactly. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm appreciative that you're able to spend this time with me. I know that we're going to be talking in the future. It's just a matter of, uh, of growing and changing and improving, and, and we appreciate everything you've done. Okay. And, and for your, applaud you for your tenure with the, uh, with the CROI, and I uh, hate to see you go, but you'll be around. I mean, you're around. part of the committee yeah, and so yeah, forth. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Good. Thank you, Fred. Good to see you thank again. Thank you. All right. All the best. Thank you.